Let's go for a run. You want to? Good day, madame. Yes, my dear. And what can I do for you? Oh, madame, uh, it's for a piece of blue ribbon for a dress I'm making. I want a piece that will match. Let me see now. A piece of blue ribbon, just that colour. Yes, I think we can match that for you. What about this one now? Mm, isn't that well? Not bright enough. We oh, want something a bit brighter, do you? Well, I'm sure I can find it. Yes, the one. That's it exactly. And uh, six buttons the with you to raise. There he is on the stairs now. We've got to have everything ready for when the master gets home. Yes, Mama. You know Camille likes it, don't you? Yes, Mama. He'll be worn out after his day at the office. Ah, oh, there you are, Camille. Oh, welcome home. Good evening, Mother. Did you have a good day at the office? Did you feel all right? Yes, yes. Did you keep warm enough, not sit in any draught? No, no. Well, I've got a good hot stew for your supper. That'll do you good. Now, you sit down while I go and take my apron off. Good evening, Therese. Good evening. Aren't you going to give me a kiss? If you like. Do you remember when we lived at Vernon? I mean, when we had the house on the river? Mm. I don't know if you were old enough. I used to love it. Mm. Sitting there all day, watching the boats go past. Didn't do much boating myself. I was too young, I couldn't swim, and there were my illnesses, of course, but I used to go out in other people's boats. You remember that? Oh, Marchand used to take me out quite often. You too, sometimes. You remember that? Yes. I'd like to see the Seine here. I don't mean here in the city, but out at the San Juan, yes, somewhere like that. There's no reason why we shouldn't on a fine weekend. We could have lunch in one of those restaurants on the river. What do you say? If you want to. No, but wouldn't it be nice? What time is it? Nearly ten o'clock. Oh, time we were going to bed. Oh, Mother, we were talking. It's that 
any time you were in bed, Camille, you've got a bit of a fever again. Therese, you must make sure he takes his medicine. Yes, I will. Come along with you. It's lucky for you you've got Therese and me to look after you. I don't know where you'll be by now. Not in this room with us, I'm sure of that. Oh, Therese, lock the shop door, will you? Yes, I will. And when I'm gone, you'll only have Therese to wrap you up and make sure you take your medicine. I can't tell you how lucky you are having a wife like that. Now, have you got your money for your lunch? Of course. Have you got your umbrella? It need an umbrella. Well, it might easily come on to rain and you catch a death of cold. It's the summer. You've had a summer cold before now and nearly died of it. I'm not going to risk that happening again. You be a good boy and take your umbrella with you. We can't have you catching a cold tonight of all nights. What's so special about tonight? It's Thursday. Ah. You know what happens on Thursdays? <laughs> Good evening, Monsieur Grivet. Good evening to you, Monsieur Michaud. And to what do I owe the pleasure of seeing you in these parts? I'm on my way to call on some friends. Are you by any chance going to visit the Rakas? Yes, I am. How remarkable. So am I. I might tell you, I visit them every Thursday evening at this hour. How extraordinary. So do I. <laughs> <laughs> Would you care to... Um... Oh, no, no. Please. Ah, <laughs> well, there they are. Michaud and Grivet, at least. Camille, go downstairs and let them in. Uh, if you feel well enough. If not, Therese can do it. I'll go. You can help me then, Therese. Doing what? Making things nice for the visitors. It's nice enough for them. You know I like it to be nice. They're used to it. <laughs> Aha! What do I see? A teapot, that's what you see. But the question is, is it for us? You know perfectly well it is. <laughs> ah, if Madame Raka herself says so. I do. Then it must be so. And here's a proof of it for you. A thousand thanks, madame. Camille, is it time to put the dominoes on? Uh, yes, it is. Olivier. And tea for you, Givet. Thank you, dear. Oh, what's that noise? A noise I like to hear. The best noise in the world, if you ask me. Tea for you, Suzanne. Oh, yes, please. Yes, and for you, Olivier. Yes, I will have just a drop. Now then, how many play? Everyone, I think, except perhaps Mother. No, not me. I'll be busy with the tea. Six for dominoes, then. Six desperate gamblers locked in mortal conflict. Speak for yourself. <laughs> I do, I do. We're not gamblers, Michaud. We're serious domino players. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you going? The shop bell. I didn't 
to come upstairs. They're dead. They're all dead. Therese! What are you doing down there? We're serving a customer. And you come straight back up here. You're really missing something. Could you make something the luck of the devil? Just one again! Three times in a row! Gotten Laurent, little Laurent, the son of old Laurent, had all those wheat fields down by Jeffos. Um, well, I went to school with him, he used to call for me in the morning. His uncle lived two doors from us. Oh, <laughs> yes, of course, Laurent. Mm. Oh, forgive me, but you've grown. Oh, we all do, I'm afraid. <laughs> Some more than others, you more than most. <laughs> yes, 20 years ago or more. Oh, it's lovely to see you, Laurent, after all this time. Well, Who'd have thought you'd grow to be such a big chap? <laughs> and what are you doing here in Paris? Could you believe it? This fellow's been working in the same office as I have for 18 months now. Well, uh, <laughs> no, not exactly. Not exactly the same office, the same organisation, practically the same building, but next door anyway. Next door, I admit. And only this morning, purely by accident, I bumped into him at last. Laura, the state is supper, won't we? Oh, I'd like to. That's all right. Yes, of course you must. To Ray, yes, oh, I'm here. there you are, dear. Well, Laurent, you must know my wife, my little cousin that we played with at Venon. I recognize you immediately. How do you do, madame? How do you do? She's called Therese, same as always. Yes, of course, Therese. Well, supper will soon be ready. Therese, you can give me a hand with it. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> <So good. laughs> And how is your father these days? I've really no idea. What? No idea? How's that? You haven't quarrelled, I hope. We did, about five years ago, and we haven't spoken since. What a shame, your own father. Yes. He's an extraordinary man. He always has a lawsuit on with one of his neighbours. So he got this idea of sending me to college and making me a lawyer. Idiotic. You didn't want to be a lawyer? Of course I didn't. It's very boring. And you have to read such a lot. I couldn't stand it. Has he told you, Father? No. So long as he sent me a hundred francs allowance a month. I wanted an easier life than that. I suppose your father found out in the end. Stop my allowance. Invited me to go back to Vernon and spend the rest of my life scratching the earth alongside him. Well, that wasn't my idea. Not at all. So what did you do? Well, I was living with a fellow who was a painter. So I tried my hand at painting, too. Oh, really? Well, fancy that. You a painter? I'd never have thought it a big, strong fellow like you. Oh, it's rather an amusing job. I'm not tiring at all. But it's not much of a way of earning a living, so I took a job in an office, and uh, here I am. The shop bell, Therese. Therese, the... Never mind. I'll go. When you say painting, you mean house painting. I should have thought that would be a very good way of earning a living. No, no, I was an artist in a studio. With models? Gorgeous models. I had a red-haired model. She was magnificent. Dazzling white skin, long red hair, bust that was really superb. As for her hips. There wasn't anyone there. I suppose it's those street boys again. Well, you're ready for your cheese. Good. I'll get it. You know, I must paint your portrait. Really? You mean it? Well, what's the good of being an artist if you don't use your talents? Here you are, then. Hi. No one's going to paint my portrait. Oh, that is good of you, Laura. Oh, that would be lovely. Really lovely. I've never had a portrait of Camille. How long will it take you? Oh, about a week or so. If you could sit for me every evening, I think that would be enough. Wouldn't you? 
And you'll eat with us every night, of course. Oh, I'll have my hair cut, wear my new suit. Oh, it'll be just lovely. And I don't expect too much, will you? I've only done saints or angels before now. And red-haired models. And red-haired models. <laughs> oh, I can't wait to see what it looks like. <laughs> A saint or an angel, I suppose. <laughs> my Camille's both. Both. Is that how you want me? Yes, like that will do. Or should I turn my profile? No, no, full face will do. Hello, Therese, I told you, he doesn't want me profile, he wants me full face. He didn't say what he would want. But you said. I think. What? It might be better if you were to turn your head towards the window. Like that? Yes, like that. You look more distinguished somehow. I should like to look distinguished. You understand, I chose this room because the light was better in here. Artists always have a studio with a north light. Is that so? And the light from the window falls across your face in a way which is very distinguished. Like that? Is that distinguished? Yes. You haven't been to bed with her yet? No. What's the matter with you? Nothing. It's not like you. It's only because, wait up. A bottle of red wine and two glasses. It's only because of what? You don't really love her. What other excuse have you got? It's not that I don't love her. God knows whether I do or not. She's not beautiful. She's attractive, I suppose. She's attractive. Well? I've always wanted life to be easy. They make things easy for me. Food every night, wine to go with it. They flatter me, they make me comfortable, they fuss over me. There's only one thing. Bed. I'm in a bed with her. We don't knock the other things off. No, I never do. I don't want to stop having the free meals or the free drinks. No, no, that won't happen. You sure? Quite sure. You just try. Really sure? Word of an artist. <laughs> do you really have models who took their clothes off in front of you? It's their job. But the first time. They do it all the time. You must have felt a fool. No? Why? I would have. I found it perfectly natural. I'd have been embarrassed. There's no light through the window. Do I still look distinguished? Yes. The light doesn't matter much to a painter like me. Anyway, I'll finish soon. Yes, you'll have to. There's people coming at 8 o'clock. You're Thursday visitors. You probably know Monsieur Grieve from the office. Oh, yes, I do. Well, yes, I know that. He's an old friend of ours. Are you by any chance going to visit the Rakas? Yes, I am. How remarkable. So am I. <laughs> Good evening, dear madame. Very nice to see you. Are we permitted to see the portrait now? Yes, of course. Come in, mother. Come in now. Yes. Yes. Come along. It's time for some. Follow me. I need light and rubbish. So here it is. Isn't it like me? Doesn't he look distinguished? He looks like a drowned man. Of course, it's not finished mm. yet. Well, Laurent, <laughs> did you do this? Yes, I... Uh, I, I simply meant the, the greenish colour of the skin. Ah, yes. Well, it's not going to look like that when it's finished. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, I think it's lovely. And exactly like him. And I think Monsieur Laurent is a beautiful artist. Just beautiful. Well, I don't know much about art. But I'd say it's very, very good. Mother! Mother! I can be 15 soon, madame. Merci, madame. Mother, it's finished. Is it really? Yes, come and see. Thank you, madame. Au revoir, madame. Au revoir, madame. No, not yet. Why not yet? I'm going to get two bottles of champagne. We'll celebrate. Yes, good idea. <laughs>
Come in. Hello, Laurent. What do you want? May I have permission, sir? For what? May I ask permission, sir, to be absent for the, from the office for an hour or two this afternoon? For what purpose? My toothache, sir. It's suddenly come on. I, I simply must go to the dentist. The ache is agony, sir. I can't bear it. <laughs> what did you tell them? Well, I, I said I had an ache. A terrible ache. <laughs> so I had for you. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> oh! Oh! Well, are you sure it's all right? Camille's at his office. Yeah, but Madame Raquel. She's in the shop. Oh, she might come up. What would she do that for? She has to stay there in case somebody <laughs> might steal it. She might hear us and come up. What if she does? Deal with her. Get your clothes off and come into bed with me. Straight off, just like that. I didn't do anything about it. I couldn't. All my life I've been hiding my feelings. I wanted to shout and scream, but I've trained myself to be gentle and quiet. I got out of the habit of doing anything real. The moment I saw you, I wanted to kiss you. I used to wait for you to come into the room. And then I'd walk around and around your chair. Just to walk through your breath and brush my clothes against yours. And I couldn't kiss you. I had to wait for you to kiss me. And then when you did, everything, everything became real. did you marry Camille for? I was brought up with him. Why? What happened to your parents? My mother was a foreigner. Algerian, Moroccan. She died when I was little. Ran off with someone more like. More like? 
when my father was drowned at sea. Oh, yes, I remember that. Madame Raquel was his sister. She brought me up since I was six. In the same room as Camille. He was always ill. And I always had to take a spoonful of his medicine or he wouldn't. I slept in the same bed with him. And the smell of his body made me feel sick. I don't know why I didn't die. And then when I grew up, it just seemed natural to go on living in the same bedroom. Madame Raquel was always kind. But Camille turned out to be the same feeble, sickly creature I'd been sleeping with since I was six. You should have married me. I'm not feeble. There they are. Mm. I'll go. Mm. You can help me then, Therese. Yes, I will. Uh, may I help too? No. It's nothing for you to do. Therese, be nice to Laurent. It was nice of him to offer to help. Was it? I don't know why, but you always seem so sharp with him these days. And you have to be nice to him for my sake. Because he's my second son. Aren't you, Laurent? <laughs> <laughs> and you're my second mother. There, there. <laughs> you caught! Oh, the guilty pair, red hair. Oh, get along with you. <laughs> Reva, you're a witness. You'll testify. Indeed, I will. <laughs> Flagrant adultery. <laughs> I throw myself upon the mercy of the court. Yeah, wait till Camille gets here. You'll show no mercy. Where is Camille? He's bringing Olivia and Suzanne. <laughs> More to the point. Where is it? It? What it? Hello. Here we are. We're only two minutes late this time. Camille, a serious question. I don't know what he's talking about. What have you done with it? Oh, the portrait. That better semblance of yourself. It's gone to the framers. Ah. Olivier, yes. I don't think you know the immortal artist. No. Monsieur Laurent, may I present my son, Olivier? Delighted to meet you. Delighted. And his wife, Suzanne. Oh, delighted. Splendid. Now everybody knows everybody else. And you can all <laughs> sit down and have a cup of tea. Allow me to assist you, oh, dear you. madame. Thank you, Vivet. That is thank most you. kind. Yeah. Most ah, kind. Laura. Suzanne. Yes? Why don't you come and sit by Therese? Anyone would think you were trying to avoid her. It's not as bad as all that. Oh, <laughs> not as bad as all that. I not as bad as all that. <laughs> but I should warn you, for your own good, what? particularly in view of your recent behaviour. Oh, uh, what are you talking about? It was perfectly natural, wasn't it, Laurent? But my son Olivier uh -huh. is very important in the detection of crime. Far more important than I ever was. Yes, indeed, far more. You don't think I'm a policeman. I wouldn't want you to imagine that. No, he, he works in an office which directs the operation of the police forces of France. Day and night, there they are, tracking down criminals, adulterers, murderers. Oh, dear. In that case, I'll make the tea. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wanted to laugh in their faces and say, don't you know I have a lover? I have a lover and it's him. If we commit adultery together, we do all sorts of things together that you never even dreamed of. What do you don't make such a noise, she'll hear you. Oh, what if she does? At last she'll learn that her darling Camille isn't perfect. Isn't even good at the only thing that's worth doing between a man and a woman. And I found someone who's much better at it. I found someone who is perfect! <laughs> God, she's about to come up! Oh, let her come up, I don't care. Oh, I love you. She's coming! Is that you, Mama? Can I come in? Yes, come in. Are you all right, dear? No, 
I have a terrible headache. Oh, oh, I am sorry. Oh, please, please. Mama, please let me sleep. Yes, yes, that would be best. Good evening, madame. Go upstairs and have a glass of wine. Camille and Therese are up there. Thank you, I will. I'll be up in just a minute. They're almost coming. Now, you be nice to him. Niceness doesn't cost anything. Good evening, Camille. Good evening, Therese. Good evening, Laurent. How are you? Very well, thanks. And may I not have some greeting from madame? When you've done something to deserve one. <laughs> well, I shall try to. Oh, Laurent, I've got some photographs to show you. They're in my bedroom. I won't be a moment. What? Photographs? Oh, yes. I'd like to see those. Yes. I'd very much like to see those. Photography. I'm interested in that. Oh. Ah. <laughs> oh, look at Francois. He's going to tell Camille all about us this evening. You think so? Yes. He'll stretch himself out. And he'll point one paw at me and the other paw at you. And he'll say in a very serious voice, that man and that woman kiss each other in the bedroom and in the bed. It's disgusting what they do. And what's worst of all is that they do it when I want to sleep. So please put them both in prison or anywhere where they can't do it anymore so as I can get some sleep. You wanted to see me, sir? About these hours you've been taking off. Yes, sir. For earache or toothache or God knows what. The management has decided that you have abused this privilege. No, sir. And that in future you will not be allowed any hours off any at all. And if you really want time off, you can have it. Afternoons off, mornings off, without pay, in short, the sack. Do you understand? Yes, sir. paint like you and I can't starve. You mean you'll give her up? I have to. Oh, there are plenty of other women around. I you? know that. She's got so inside me. She's not like any other woman. It's as if she's got into my bloodstream and my muscles. I need her to live like I need food and drink. I never thought to see you the slave of a woman. I never thought to see myself cut her away from her. I can't. All right then, make her come to your place.
We won't get any money out of her unless I go there and shake it out of her. What's at night? At night's the only time she's there. She's out working all day. Do you know where she lives now? Yes, I got her address from the woman who's moved into her apartment. Where is it? Batignol. It's a long way. Yes, well, I'll take the bus. Oh, well, if you really want to. It's the only way of getting our money. Rather you than me. It won't be long. Take care, Therese. The streets at night. Yes, I will. Therese, you're not going out without your hat. I know. Quick, quick, I need you. Therese has been gone a long time. Mm. Say that. What should I say? Tell me when you'll come again. Do you want the truth? I don't think I'll ever be able to come again. I haven't got any excuses for getting away from him, and I'm no good at it, Ben. That really is goodbye. No, I don't want it to be. But I must go now. <sighs> I've got nothing against him. But he gets in our way. Can't you do something with him? Send him on a long journey and he won't come back. <laughs> you think a man like that? No, there's only one journey he'll go on and won't come back. But it's no good. That sort of invalid lasts forever. spend the whole night with you. Go to sleep in your arms. Wake up in your arms. I wanted to be your husband. Oh, no. No, don't say mm. things like that. I won't have the strength to go. Tell me we're going to see each other again soon. We will, won't we? We'll live together and we'll sleep together. Come back tomorrow. No, Come back here tomorrow. I, I haven't got any excuse. I'm not afraid of the scandal. I'll go back now and tell Camille you're my lover. But I don't want to ruin your life. I want you to be happy. Oh, if only Camille were dead. If only Camille were dead. We'd get married and enjoy each other. Oh, what a life that would be. dangerous for the people who survive. Whatever way it's done. I'm not a fool. I want to love you in peace. But accidents happen every day. 
Someone slips in the street, a tile falls from the roof. And only the wind is guilty. Don't worry, darling. I'll arrange everything. All you have to do is wait and don't forget me. I'm working for our happiness. You are mine. Yes. Do what you like with me. I belong to you. Sunday will be the last Sunday of summer. The last is it's sure to be fine. We'll go on the river. You taking your medicine? No. We'll take it. On Sunday, shall we go to Saint Juan? Go on the river? Oh, that would be nice. Would you like that, though? Of course he'd like it. We'd just like it very normal when we were young. <laughs> it will be a pleasure. A last outing of the season, in all probability. All the more of a pleasure. The country air will do you good, madame. Oh, I'm not coming with you. I'm much too old. <laughs> well, surely in heart. It'll just be you two. And Therese. Won't you come with us, madame? We'll be very glad of your company. I'm much too old. <laughs> now you're not to let Camille sit in any wet grass to raise. I'll make sure, Mama. We don't want him catching his death of cold. I'm taking. Best if he sits on his jacket mm -hmm. or anyway something under him. Stop fussing, Mother. I'm not fussing. I just want to be sure you're properly looked after. And no eating oysters at the restaurant. You've been very ill through eating oysters in your time. Yes, I remember that. All shellfish is bad for you, but certainly no oysters. We'll take care of him, Mother. Goodbye, Mother. Goodbye, dear. Goodbye, Madame. Goodbye, Laurent. We'll do our best with him. Thank you. Bye, Bye. Therese. <laughs> and, uh, and don't sit in any draught. We won't. And don't get too hot, or you may catch a chill. Don't worry. We'll be careful. <laughs>
You hungry? Yes, I suppose so. Here's the place. Did you order dinner here? Certainly did. I'll go ahead, see if they're ready for it. Right. What do you want? Roast chicken? It's a speciality here. Roast chicken will be fine. Won't be a minute. Come over here. Good day, sir. Maybe. Oh. Just do what I say. <laughs> they say they've got so many people, they can't take us for three quarters of an hour. Do you mind? I don't mind waiting. But Should we sit down, have a drink, pass the time? I don't want a drink. Let's go for a row. You want to? It'll fill up the time nicely. We'll let Therese decide. A drink or a row? I think a row would be nice. Right. And row it is. Laurel, would you like to choose a boat? I think this one. A bit rather thin. It makes it go faster in the water. Hey, monsieur, can we take this boat for an hour? A what? Sure. Get in then, Camille. Let's not move about too much, otherwise we'll get wetter than we want to. Get in there! I'll take it. Right. Have a good row. Now you, Therese. I'm gonna drown. Do what I say. Look at Therese. She's afraid to get in. <laughs> She's afraid of the water. <laughs>
Paul! Get rid of the ship oars. I want to hit them. Pull in. Okay, ship oars now! Ooh. Take her! Get her! Bring them over here! Bring her to the boat! Quick! Oh, Get at it! Oh, yes. I've got it! Oh, no. oh. All right! If they're in careful, careful. <laughs> I've got it. Yes, I've got it. Okay. All right. right. Get over here. In front of you. Put it down. Are you all right? Okay. Are you all right now? So go and get some blankets. Get some help. Go for some help. It's all right now. It's all right. Camille? Where's Camille? Who's Camille? Was he someone with you? Camille! Where is he? Was he in the boat? We only saw the two of you. Oh, you must have seen him. Her husband. My friend. Come here. Oh, hold him. He's going in again. Hold him. Oh, Come here. Come here. Come here. Please help me. Where's my husband? Come here. Camille's dead. What? Camille's dead. Drowned. My dear boy. Come in, come in. <sighs> dead, is he? Drowned. Come in. Here's Laurent. He, he, he wants to tell you... Uh, what? Camille's dead. 
Drowned. How drowned? It, it was an accident. The boat upset. He couldn't swim. I, I was busy saving Therese. He'd gone under and I, I couldn't find him. Oh, how terrible for you. And for Madame Raquin. Oh, I, I wonder, could you... Could I what? Any, anything, dear boy, anything. Could you break the news to Madame Raquin? Oh. I, I haven't the courage to... Uh... Yes. Well, if you go into a home like that, you'll know there's something wrong straight away. If Camille's not with you, she'll know it's to do with him. Oh, good idea. Leave it to us to break the news to her. We'll, uh, we'll bring it into the conversation. Oh, Madame Raquin. Poor Camille. I mean, he goes out for a day's pleasure and he ends up dead. Come along, Olivier, and you, Suzanne. Laurent, you'll come with us. Well, only as far as the door. No, no, I, we'll, I, I we'll break be... it to her. Leave that to us. Thank you. Standing up to the boat. Standing up? I think he wanted to prove that he wasn't afraid of the water. He danced about a bit, rocking the boat. I told him to sit down, but he wouldn't. Always the same, Camille. And suddenly he fell in. Well, that rocked the boat even more, so... Oh, these boat accidents. It was the same at Vernon. We had exactly the same accident, happened a hundred times. Sometimes fatally, sometimes not. And Therese is still at the river. Yes. Helping the police with their inquiries. I suppose so. But if you could come back there with me... Afterwards. Afterwards. We have a sad duty to perform first. I'll stay here. Just in case she sees me. We'll be as quick as we can. Michel, how nice to see you. What brings you here? Good evening, dear madame. May we come in? And Olivier and Suzanne, too. Oh, yes, do come in. How are you all? As well as can be expected, you know. Well, do come in. I'm all alone in the house. The young ones have gone to the river. anyone see Camille dancing about in the boat? I mean, anyone except you and Therese? What? I didn't quite... Did anyone know. see Camille dancing about in the boat? I don't think so. Did you? Oh. Why? Always a pity if you don't have witnesses to what happened. Ah. Still, there may have been. Yeah. Yes, there may have been. On the bank or somewhere? Yes. Was there a policeman trying to find witnesses when you came away? I think so. I imagine there would have been. Yes, that's, that's what I meant. There would have been. Good. Kind, but we can't leave her here. Let's get her back to Paris. I think that would be the best thing. Yeah, in case it's something serious, let's get her home. I'll tell her. <laughs> Therese, we're going to take you home. It's the best place for you. You can sleep in your own bed. See your own doctor if you need to. Now, we've got a cab outside that'll take us there, so um, we'll, we'll wait for you and you get dressed. We'll find something warm for you to wrap yourself in, and off we'll go. All right? Good. Thank you. Thank you, madame. I found them. She's coming back with us. Good. They found them. Two or three witnesses, in fact. 
Really? Yeah, some of the boat crew that rescued them saw it happen. Oh? I wouldn't have thought they were near enough. No, they described it in detail. It was just like you said. Camille dancing about, jumping up and down. You understand I believed your story when you told us, but I've been trained in police methods. It's nice to have several people confirm a story. Absolutely. In detail. It's so much more satisfactory from every point of view, you understand? Oh, yes, yes, of course. According to their story, you were quite a hero. Really? Diving in and trying to find Camille. Did I? Several times, apparently, until they managed to stop you. I suppose I was half mad with grief. Well, they've told their story to the police and to a reporter from a Paris paper and to everyone who's willing to listen. So I'd say you were going to be a celebrity from tomorrow morning on. You ready then? Right, let's be on our way. Good day, madame. May I have your permission to come in for a moment? Yes, for a moment. May I inquire after the health of your dear mother-in-law? She has had a great shock. She is keeping to her bed. Please give her my best wishes for a speedy recovery. Yes, I shall. And your own health? Feeling much better, thank you. I'm very glad to hear it. Be strong. We've a long wait ahead of us, remember? Yes, I remember. Good day, madame. Good day, monsieur. Oh, by the way, Olivier tells me that the death is not official can't be formally established until the body has been found and has been identified by someone who knows him. So I... What? I intend to call at the morgue every morning on my way to the office to see if he's been found yet. Good day, madame.
I needed that. I'm starting to dream about them. Why do you go on doing it? I have to. But why? I promise to. I've got to keep my promise. He's dead, isn't he? No one doubts yeah, that. Well, he's got to be proved to be dead, or it's no good. What's no good? I don't understand. Well, until he's officially dead, he, she can't be officially a widow. Oh. And draw a pension or anything like that. Well, to do that, he's got to be proved to be dead. Dear madame. Oh, my poor Camille, my poor boy. Why did he have to die? There, 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 there. And you tried to save him. You dived in again and again. I did what I could. He was my friend. You were a hero, a real hero. You saved Therese. You would have saved Camille if you could. But... <laughs> You couldn't. No, I couldn't. Come along upstairs, Mother, and I'll make you a cup of tea. Come along. Sit down, Laurent, in your usual place. Dear Laurent, ah, oh, you've been a good friend. A second son, that's what you've been. My only son, now that Camille's gone. Oh, don't distress yourself, dear <laughs> madame. Uh, no, 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 I'll go. No, but... No, 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 I'll do it. You here already? Good. How is she? She's aged a good deal. Oh, I told you so. Well, we must make her young again. Indeed we must, like us, eh? <laughs> Olivier and Susanna are just coming along. I'll wait for them, man. We'll go out. Are. Shall I empty them out then? Yes. Make a noise. The best noise in the world, if you ask me. <laughs> Dear madame, you'll make yourself ill if you go on like that. You really mustn't take things so hard. We all have to die sooner or later. All your tears won't bring him back. Please don't cry, madame. You'll make us cry too. You must make an effort, madame. We've come round here especially to cheer you up. Mm. Smile. Forget what's happened. What's past is past. Let's be cheerful while we can. Now, I, I think we should have a little flutter on the domino. Mm? I, I, I think we should play for two sous a game. Eh? What do you say, madame? Yes. <laughs> Leave me out of the first game, please. I'll make the tea. Right. Two sewer game it is. Let play commence, and then we'll have tea. <laughs> Hello, Laurent. Good day, Therese. Did you want to see Mother? She's upstairs in her room, resting. 
It was only to see if there was anything I could do for her. Any odd jobs around the place, errands I could run. It's very nice of you, but I really think there's nothing needs doing. It's just that there are some things a man can do. Since you've removed the man of the house. Removed? Well, got rid of him. You don't deny it, do you? No. You can't. And you know why I did it? Yes. To become the man of the house myself? Yes. Do you ever have nightmares about Camille? No. Do you? Mm. I feel so happy and contented to lie in that bed without him beside me that I sleep like... like a top, I suppose. Or whatever sleeps better than a top. I see the faces of the people in the morgue a good deal in my dreams. But not Camille, never. Really, I've got rid of him? Yes. Turned him out of our lives, finally and forever. Yes. I hope so. It exhausted me. Me too. Now all I want to do is to live calmly and peacefully. Happily. Happily, I don't care about. Just so long as it is peaceful. It will be provided nobody finds out. They won't, how can they? And the only way that anyone can know the truth is from us. It's safe with us. Provided we're careful. We will be. Therese, I'm getting up now. Would you like me to come upstairs and help you, Mother? No, thank you, dear. I can manage quite well by myself, most of it anyway. Is that you, Laurent? Yes! Oh, and what are you doing here, my dear? I wondered if there was anything needed fetching or carrying. Oh, what a thoughtful boy you are. Isn't he kind, Therese? Oh, very kind. So I've been telling him. Better than your last place. Yeah, it's well, I'm exhibiting at the salon now, you know. You don't say? In the papers. I'm famous. Who's she? A model of mine. Good girl. Always comes early in case there's anything else I want. Right then, Marie. <clears throat> Same as yesterday. Move your arm back a bit. And your right foot. That's it, fine. She's very handsome. Yes, isn't she? Found her myself. She's never been a model before. Really? Absolutely new to the trade. I'd like to have her. What? Well, I thought it might get you out of this foul mood you've been in. She won't cost much. And she's as clean as a whistle, I can guarantee that. No. That's a fair offer. Yes, I'm sure it is. I'm grateful for it. You're a friend. But what? Nothing. Just but. That's it. Uh, I've won. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, well, I expect at least a round of applause. <laughs> anyway, I expect two sous from each of you, if you please. I don't think we should pay him. He cheated. Well, what evidence do you say that? Do you see me cheat? 
No, but... Well, then. Uh, look, Michaud, it is not possible that you should win. Well, not without cheating. Don't you agree with me, Olivier? <laughs> Regretfully, I am forced to admit that <laughs> my father... Are, Olivier, you? show more respect for your father. If not for your father, then for a retired inspector of police. Police, eh? <laughs> a man who cheats at dominoes is worse than a man who, who, who murders his best friend. <laughs> Oh, that's a bit strong, isn't it? <laughs> Nothing is too strong for a domino's cheat. Mm -hmm. For me and mother. Ah, yes. <laughs> thank you, my dear. <laughs> oh, did you pay him for me, Therese? Yes, Mama. Oh, thank you, Therese. I'll pay you back. I shan't forget. Don't worry. No, one must always pay one's debts. Isn't that so, Michelle? It is indeed, madame. And, and if you'll care to incur some new debts, I shall be honoured and delighted. <laughs> well, thank you, but I am beginning to feel rather tired. And we shall leave you, dear madame. With our thanks for yet another wonderful evening. A most enjoyable evening. And with our hopes that next week the winner will be a more reputable character. <laughs> <laughs> be that as it may, we look forward to seeing you next Thursday. Good night, madame. Good night, Michel. Yeah. Uh, Therese, you'll see them down the stairs. Yes, Mama. Uh, before you go, Laurent, if you'd help me to my room. Of course, gladly. Would you like me to? No, thank you, Suzanne. I can manage quite well by myself once I'm in my room. <laughs> Good night. Good night, dear. Good night, everybody. Good night. <laughs> How are you these days, Therese? Oh, very happy. No, I don't mean happy, of course, but calm, very relaxed. You've got over it. He's dead. Yes. yes, I've got over it. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. There you are. Now, is there anything else I can get you? No, that's all. I'm all right now I'm here. Thank you so much, Laurent. Not at all. I'm afraid I'm just a tiresome old woman these days. Nothing of the sort. You're not to talk like that. Ever since Camille... Ever since Camille died, I, I can't move about like I used to. We love you just the same. And I love you, Laurent. Almost as if you were my own son. Good night, Laurent. Good night, madame. Oh, uh, shut the door. I can see quite well enough by the light of the candle. And I shall go to sleep straight away. Good night. One more to see out. In a moment. Has she gone to bed? Yes. Good. And she'll go to sleep straight away. And she can't move from her bedroom without someone to help her. Well? Till we're married, then you can have me. Good night, madame. Good night, monsieur.
glass of red wine and sweat. <laughs> Say again. I'm here. Come to bed. Good evening, madame. Uh, how are you? I, I didn't sleep very well last night, and I, I've been falling asleep all day at the office. Oh, you poor thing. I wonder if it's the weather. Therese didn't sleep well either. She was tossing and turning all night long, and she had dreadful nightmares, apparently. Did she? She hardly had enough strength to bring me down here after lunch. And she went straight back up again for a rest, and I haven't heard a sound from her since. Really? You go up and see what she's doing now, there's a dear. 
She can't rest all day or she won't sleep at night. And it's nearly time she was starting to cook the supper. Yes. I'll, uh, I'll go up and see how she is. Yes, you tell her that too much rest isn't good for her. She'll do much better to move about a bit, get herself tired. Feel strange. Why? What's the matter? Last night I saw. No, I can't tell you. Laurent, come in here. No. Come in my bedroom. I'm here. Did you dream about Camille last night? Yes. Was he in my bed? Yes. Did he grin and stretch out yes. his? Bed, it wouldn't be able to happen, would it? No. I'll ask her to let me marry you straight away. Why not? Because it'd tell them the reason you murdered him. It's perfectly possible to fall in love with a widow without having murdered the husband. But if you go out in a boat with him and come back and say he's drowned and then marry her? No. No. He mustn't do anything. Anything. You mustn't touch me ever. And you mustn't look at me like that. And you mustn't speak a single word of love to me, even when you know there's nobody listening. I suppose you're right. You know I'm right. Yes. No looking. No touching. We must be hypocrites. Perfect hypocrites. So, we don't propose marriage to them. We get them to propose marriage to us. What now? <laughs> Shall I propose, greatly daring, that we increase the stake to three sous? Well, you want to lose even more money? I want to win back what I've lost a bit faster. <laughs> what do you say, madame? Shall we let him ruin himself? Just as you like. It's all the same to me. <laughs> three sous, then. Anybody not in agreement? Yeah. I'll uh, sit this one out, if you don't mind. I'm not willing to risk three sous. But you're the richest of us all now that you have your promotion. No, it wasn't a promotion. Well, it was certainly a rise, and I happen to know how much. Your chief clerk is a friend of mine. All right, I can afford three soon. Heaven knows I don't want to break up a pleasant evening. It's just that I don't care to gamble so high. It's against my principles. Ah, a man of principle. We must respect that. Will you forgive me if I go upstairs and rest for a moment? But what is it? Is it your stomach? No, it's not really my stomach. Well, whereabouts is it? Under my heart. You want to lie down then for at least an hour? Yes. Until you feel all right again. Yes, I will. Don't worry. At this time, Olivia, I am positive your father cheated. All the same, he didn't win. Oh, no. He didn't win, but he might have. 
Does anybody cheat for the sake of two sous? Uh, two sous each. That is, twelve sous in all. It's worth having. Men have committed murders for less. <laughs> Where is father that we may formally accuse him? Uh -huh. Michel. What is it, madame? Michel, I'm worried about Therese. Ah. She's not at all well. No, I noticed that. And you may think me a selfish old woman, but she's all I have in the world. She's so silent and sorrowful. It's as if she's fading away. I don't know what's the matter with her. But if I should lose her, I don't know what I'd do. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I've seen the way Therese is looking, all mournful and discontented, and I'll tell you why it is. Yes, tell me, is it something we can cure? <laughs> In my opinion, Therese is weary of being alone. At night, in her room. She needs a husband, that's all. But Camille is... Y your Camille was a good husband to her, but he's been dead quite a long time now. I know she's still wearing mourning for him, but only a little bit longer. And because Camille was a good husband, she's gotten the habit of having a good husband. She needs another one now. You really think so? Therese is ill for lack of a man. Marry her off as quickly as possible, and you'll see the roses come back in her cheeks. <laughs> That's my opinion, madame, and it's a good one. Good night to you. <laughs> good night, monsieur. Good night, Therese. Monsieur, how did you think she was? I'm very worried. Her paralysis seems to get a bit worse every day. She needs a lot of looking after. Yes, indeed she does. By more than one person. And I hope that's what I've been arranging. <laughs> Good night, my dear. Good night, monsieur. The shop bell. Go and see who it is to raise, would you? Yes. Be very short. Just. Good. Dear Madame, for you. For me? <laughs> what are you doing bringing me flowers? Or rather, for. I beg you to accept them in the memory of my friend. Camille. You remember Camille? <laughs> it is the anniversary of his death. <laughs> oh, Camille, my son. He was my best friend. <laughs> oh. Good evening, dear madame, yeah. on the arm of your servitor. <laughs> Good evening, Michel. Good evening, Millet. I hope I find you well. Fit as two old fiddles, I think we can say. I think we can. And how are you, madame? Not so young as I used to be. <laughs> we none of us are that. But quite well considering, thank you. <laughs> and your niece? She still looks poorly. I'm still worried about her. That is the man she ought to marry. You think so? He'd look after you devotedly. Devotedly? He'd be a second son to you. A second son. <laughs> you lot go on. I just have a word with this young man. You're going to ask him how to play dominoes, are you? <laughs> go on, Grivet. Mm? Oh, yeah. Mm. Yes, sir. Mm. What's the sound you out, Laurent? What about? About a rather delicate matter. On behalf of some dear friends of ours. Well, go ahead. Sell me. What do you think of Therese? Therese? Why? 
I have a reason for asking. Well, how can I put it? She's the widow of my best friend. Yes. I love her. I like a sister, I suppose. Could you uh, love her as something more than a sister? <laughs> I've no idea. What do you mean? And to put it frankly and plainly, could you love her as a wife? As a wife? I've never thought of that. Therese, mm, what do you think of Laurent? Laurent? Why? Mm, never mind why. What do you think of him? He's a good friend. Yes. He's a very good friend, that's all. Do you love him? No, no, no. That's not the right question. Could you love him? Could I? Yes. Well, as a brother, and as Camille's best friend. Ah, <laughs> oh, Camille. Yes, but as anything more than a brother? What do you mean? Good day, madame. Good day, Therese. How are you, Michaud? She accepts. Dear mother, if making Therese happy is a way of making you happy, and that is what I shall do. Uh, Therese, do you want to help me make our mother happy? Yes. When Camille was drowning, he called out, look after Therese, I entrust her to you. I think of it as a sacred duty, a vow I made to my friend. Kiss her then! Kiss her! <laughs> <laughs> Do you, Laurent, take this woman, Therese, to be your lawful wedded wife? I do. Ego conjungo vos in matrimonium, in nomine patris, et fili, et spiritus sancti. Amen. <laughs> Hey, <laughs> come along, Micho. Hey, hey, this will improve your dominoes. What? <laughs> come on, another toast, eh? Whoops! <laughs> to give the bridegroom strength. I'll give you one <laughs> to their children, and may they have many of them. <laughs> to their children. <laughs> come on, Olivia, you're not drinking. Uh, to their children. <laughs> <laughs> She's waiting for you. <laughs> Go on then, Laurel. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> Thank you, Suzanne. Oh. <laughs> And good luck to you! <laughs> to their children!
Therese. Do you remember I had a dream? I wanted to spend the whole night with you. Go to sleep in your arms, wake up in your arms. Now it's going to come true. <sighs> Nothing stands in our way any longer. Nothing at all. We've done it. We've really done it. Camille! Did you see him in the morgue? Yes. What did he look like? Did he look as if he'd suffered? <laughs> there. Kiss me. There. What is it? That, 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 that. I don't know that scar. What is it? Kiss it. Kiss it. When we were in the boat and, the... and I was throwing him overboard, he bit me. There. Kiss it. Oh, kiss oh, it. Oh, it's still bleeding.
my dear. It's a lovely morning. Is it? Oh, yes. It's lovely. Are you happy then? Yes. Very happy. Oh. Now you are to stay in bed and Laurent and I will bring you your breakfast. No, don't bother. I'll get up. No, you won't. We want this to be a treat for you too. We're happy and we want everyone to be happy. Very well. If you insist. We do. <laughs> what is it, Therese? May Laurent come in for a moment? He's got... Yes, of course. Something to give you from our room. Yes, of course. All right, you can take it in there now. Go on, you're not afraid of it in the daylight, are you? I'm not afraid of it behaved as if you were last night. Last night? So did you. Only when he was there in the bed. We were children. We imagined things. Yes. We'll be glad to get rid of it. Then we'll be all right. Laurent. What? Smile. You had a happy night. Did I? You had me for the first time. Oh, yes. So I did. Come in, Laurent. Good morning, Mother. Good morning, Laurent. It's a lovely morning. <laughs> and I brought you the portrait. I believe you're going to have it in here. Oh, yes. My poor Camille. Oh, you mustn't cry, Mother, when it's such a lovely day. Now, there's a hook. Shall I hang it for you? Yes, please. He was a splendid fellow. But you're going to have a new son now. And Therese has got a new husband. And we're going to be happy, aren't we? As happy as sand boys, aren't we? Of course we are. Of course <laughs> we are. Aren't you going to get undressed? We're going to bed then. Why not? why he won't get into the bed. Why? Because Camille will be there with us, between us, in the bed. He can't be there. I gave the portrait to her. She's got it in her room. Look at the bed. Camille can't be there. It's not possible. We drowned him. We saw him drown. I saw his body dead on the slab in the morgue. He's dead. He can't come back. When a young married couple, both of them, have dark rings round their eyes, it's a sign. A sign of what? <laughs> <laughs> what would you say it was a sign of grief, well, eh? I'd say it foretold a happy event in roughly nine months' time. Ah! <laughs> you think that, do you? Yes. Well, I dare say you're right. Or, or at least it's a sign that they're going the right way about mm. it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's enough of the silly childishness. Take your clothes off. No! Are you afraid of Camille? He's dead, I tell you. No! Get your clothes off, then. You're my wife, aren't you? You have to take your clothes off when I tell no! you. No! Stop imagining things. Camille's in his grave. Get away! Or do I have to kill him all over again? Stop, Laurent. You're tearing my clothes. Leave me alone. I'm your husband, not Camille. Not that weak little... Not no, that please don't, Laurent. Listen to this, 
When we're dead, <laughs> when we're dead, it won't make the slightest difference to us, one way or another, that we killed that good for nothing, that we threw him in the grave because he couldn't. No! No! Just like the first time, remember? Therese, we're going to get rid of him forever, whether you like it or not. Are you ready to go downstairs, then? Yes, I've finished my coffee. Let me give you a hand, then. I, I don't know if I'll be able to manage the stairs. This wretched paralysis gets worse every day. I can stand all right and walk a bit on the level. But the stairs... No, I can't even walk on the level now. Oh, I'm sorry to be such a tiresome old woman, but I'm afraid I can't. I really can't. Nonsense. You're not tiresome at all. We'll just have to buy you a wheelchair and push you from oh. room to room. <laughs> and I'll carry you down no, the stairs. No, I'll be too heavy. No, for I'll you. carry you now. No, there. No, Ooh, no, no. Light as a feather. Oh, no. Put me down the wrong way. Come on, let's show to. Therese. Oh, dear. Mother, what is he doing to you? Just showing her how easy it is to carry her. He's so strong. And she's so light. No trouble at all. Oh, but put me down Here now. We Whatever you say. But we will get you a wheelchair, if only to move you from your room to here. There. I am too heavy for you. Not a bit of it. And I'll carry you down the stairs just to prove it. But only if that's what you really want. Would you really want to go down to the shop, or would you rather stay here? No, I'll go down to the shop. I'd like to be useful to you while I can. <laughs> Up with you then, and hold tight. Here we go. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> ah, Therese, darling, would you draw the curtain for us? Yes, of course, darling. Bye-bye. <laughs> ah, now's my chance to stumble and trip, and you go flying over the banisters. You wouldn't, would you? I might. Oh, you'd never do a thing like that. No, you're much too dear to us. We've been lost without you. <laughs> and oh. there you are. Oh. Thank you, Laurent. Now, are you all right there? Is there anything you want? No, thank Nothing you. Nothing I can get you? No, thank you. You and Therese are really much too kind. Nonsense. You're our mother, aren't you? You're all I've got. We're even then. You're all we've got. Oh, dear Laura. Uh, we excuse me a minute? Of course. I must go up again. I didn't say goodbye to Therese. Oh, dear. <laughs> Done that, have you? I'd half a mind to let her slip. Mother as well as son. Well, she's getting to be a nuisance. Just like he did. I don't mean that. But carrying her to and fro. Well, we've got nothing to gain by her death. She's given us her money already. She's given you her money. We show advised it should be under my control. She always takes me show's advice. Silly old fool. And it was under your control? You wouldn't see me for dust. How much would you take to run away? It isn't a question of that. Well, you better put up with the old woman, then. If it's just the two of us, we need her. Or there'll just be us and him. Goodbye. Back at the usual time, I hope. Ready for bed. You bitch.
How is she? The paralysis is gaining on her. It has been for some time. A month ago, she could go up and down the stairs slowly, but she could do it by herself. I'm afraid once the process has begun, there's no reversing it. You mean? It leads sooner or later, perhaps suddenly, perhaps not, but in any case, inevitably, to complete paralysis of all the members. Arms and legs and... Everything. A living death, in fact. Oh, I wouldn't say that. She'll still be able to eat and drink, see and hear, and talk. Oh! Oh, so long as she can talk. Oh, that's important to you, is it? Well, without that, there'd be no one to talk to, except my wife. Yes. And no one to talk to me, except... My husband is fond of company. Well, I hope Madame Rakan will be able to talk to you for quite a bit of time yet. Why did you have to be so rude to me? Was I? When? Telling the doctor you didn't like talking to me. I didn't say that. As good as? I simply said I was glad she'll be able to talk. And I am. It's company. I like company. You said so yourself. And I don't get much from you. Oh, in the bedroom? There's plenty of company in there. There's three of us. Shut up. There's you and me and... Shut up, I tell you. Isn't that enough for you? At least keep your voice down. She's oh, in the next let room. Let her listen. She'll learn something. Go on, hit me. That's about all you can. I hear that Madame Rakan's paralysis is not getting any better. Is that so? It's lucky she's got you two young ones to look she after. She is a fortunate woman. She deserves her fortune. You two are saints. No, they are angels. Guardian angels. And here oh, she is. Yes. Ah! In her new chariot. Isn't it magnificent? Yeah, madame. madame. I'm afraid I can't raise my hand. You'll have to do it all yourself. Dear madame, I trust this is only a temporary setback. We shall soon see you restored to full health. Oh, well, until that happens, I go about in a wheelchair and you have to lift my hand. A pleasure, dear mother. Oh, dear Olivier. <laughs> Are Suzanne and Olivier coming? Uh, in a moment. They have a good excuse for being late. Suzanne is expecting. Oh. <laughs> I'll make the tea then. So, they've beaten us to it, eh? Oh, I didn't think they would. <laughs> Nor did I. <laughs> Since you have dillied at me. <laughs> so, Laurent, how do things go with you? Hmm? Fine. Uh, did you know I was giving up my job? No, uh, y your job? The office? Yes. It was boring. But boring? But you were getting a good salary. And I wanted more time to help look after Mother. Ah, oh, for that, <laughs> yes, of course. Laurent is good to me. Yeah. <laughs> um, <clears throat> would you... Uh, would you do nothing else? I thought I might take up painting again. Painting? And get myself a small studio. Oh, yes, of course. You did that portrait of a, uh, of a friend of ours, didn't you? Yeah. Um, um. At least it'll keep me out of mischief. <laughs> are on me. I'm rich and famous now, you know. A waiter. Oh, red wine, please. Oh, I heard something about you. What was it? Oh, yes. You got married. Yes. Well, isn't it working? I'm not enjoying myself. Well, you don't surprise me. I'd never have called you the marrying type. It's not that girl you were crazy about a couple of years ago, is it? You were going to bed with her. Oh, no, no. Not that one. <laughs> she got money? 
Enough to let me leave my job. Well, that's something. But I can't stand staying in the house either. <laughs> that's worse of all. So what do you do with yourself? I've got myself a small studio. I'm trying to be a painter. You never thought much of my paintings in the old days, did you? I thought they were beginner's work. Would you come and have a look at them now? Tell me if I'm getting any better. Of course. After I've had a couple of drinks. Let's have a look at them, man. You did this. Yes. All yours? Yes. better than I would have believed. Really? You've made great strides. These have strength, delicacy and feeling. You, know, you really have talent. Why do you always use the same model? What? Well, it's different, but it's always the same person. Can you only afford one, or is it a friend? I don't have a model. Just your imagination. Is it an obsession with that face? Well, you certainly paint him to the light. studio. She's had trouble with her tongue. What? Uh, 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 Happened about an oh hour ago, God. quite sudden. I went for the doctor. He promised to come. I don't know what can be keeping him. How are you, Mother? She can't answer you. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, there, there. Never mind. I'll wipe her eyes. She's crying. Well, she won't be company for you any longer. Well, she can still hear, can't she? Can she? The doctor didn't say anything about her going deaf, too. Mother! Can you hear us? If you can, make a little sound. Oh. And show us with your eyes. Oh. Yes. She can hear us. And understand us. Then we shall have to watch what we say, shan't we? Yes, we shall. It wouldn't do to use bad language in front of Mother. It might shock her, and that would never do. <laughs> now, here we go. Now, Mother, 
try not to split. Like some more? <laughs> I can't tell whether you're saying yes or no, so I shall just have to guess. Here we go. Uh, I, I can understand everything. Oh, yes. Everything perfectly. I can read it in her eyes. We can talk to each other as well as ever, dear madame, can't we? As well as ever. Mm. You with your voice and uh, uh, me, me, me with my voice and you with your eyes, eh? <laughs> They're as good as a voice any time. I can understand everything you want. <laughs> What's she saying now, then? Uh, she's, uh, she's saying she'd like another cushion at her back. <laughs> Are you sure? And uh, she, she's sorry she can't play dominoes, but she'd like to see us have a game, yes. <laughs> Yeah, and she wouldn't mind a cup of tea uh, and a cake. Can't you read her eyes? I find it absolutely easy. Never mind these others, dear madame. <laughs> we'll have a cosy little chat, won't we? Eh? <laughs> Do you think she likes having the light on her so brightly? She doesn't mind. How do you know? I know. You like Grieve? You can tell what she thinks just by looking at her. No, I'm not like Grieve, but I can tell. Everything perfectly? Not perfectly, but well enough. Grieve's a fool. I'm not. Perhaps not. I'm here alone with her all day. I have to understand her. Not like you. What does that mean? You're out all day at cafes and bars. At my studio. Are you? Yes. Don't let's argue in front of her. Why not? She can't tell anybody. In case. In case what? Do you think Grieve is going to understand her? No, but... Uh... I think I'll have a turn going to your studio, let you stay here with her all day. What would you do there? You can't paint. No, but at least I'd find out what you do there all day. Paint? With your red-haired models. There aren't any. Aren't there? I don't use any. Oh, I thought that was the whole thing about being a painter, to have red-haired models. I don't have any models, red-haired or not. I suppose you paint it all out of your imagination. Yes, I do. Oh, I'd like to see what you imagine. I think I'll go along there myself and have a look. No. Why not? You can't. Why can't I? You just can't. I've, uh... You've what? I've destroyed all my paintings, thrown them all away. Why? They weren't good enough. Oh, good enough for what? A friend of mine, Vidal, he, he's a famous painter. He came and looked at them and he said... He uh... said they weren't good enough, no, did no, he? No, 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 he said they were talented, really talented, but I would do better if I went on... When was this? A week or two ago. All right, then you can show me what you've done since. I haven't done any since. Nothing at all? No. Well, what happened to your imagination? I only ever imagined one thing, painted one thing. And what was that? Red head models? No. What then? It was, uh, I, I can't tell you. I think you just go drinking in bars with your artist friend. You never paint anything at no, all. No, I do. Where do you get the money from? I suppose you sponge it off them. No, I paint. Paint what? I don't believe you. Paint the one thing in my imagination. And what is that one thing? I can't tell you here. You can't tell me because there isn't any one thing. No, it's not that. It's... You're trying to tell me it's... Yes, that's right. You mean you see him in your mind as well as in your bed? Yes, I do. That feeble husband of mine. Don't say his name. It makes her cry. Camille! I see him all the time. You and can't! I, I tell you, He's I dead him. and in his grave! I see him! And you're as feeble as he was! I don't know why I you're bothering I see him all him. the time! As he was when I picked him up and threw him overboard! As he was when he fell into the river and drowned! As he was when I saw him dead on a slab in the moor! All right, you killed him! What for? <laughs> to get my body every night! Well, you got it, and what do you do with it? Knows. Well, what are you going to do about it? You're going to 
tell people? How? Uh... Better put it to bed. Good night, Mother. Sleep well. Look at me all you want to. Your eyes won't kill me. And uh, I beg to open the proceedings with a double five. There. <laughs> How's that for a start, madame? I saw a little smile in your eyes as I played it. Aha, you were thinking. They'll find it hard to keep up with old Grive tonight. <laughs> and I have to take one already. Mm. Not a five to be seen. And I haven't picked one either. Was ever a man so unlucky? Lucky in dominoes, unlucky in love. Is that really so? <laughs> well, uh, Grive's never married. But that might mean he's lucky, not unlucky. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, you're obviously lucky in having the charming Therese. Oh. <laughs> what do you say, madame? That Laurent and Therese are both lucky in having each other. That's right, I quite agree. They're a model couple, and the way they look after you is unique. Quite unique. I think it's really marvellous. Everybody says so. Oh, it's only what anyone would have done in our place for a mother who so dearly loved. There's no credit attached to it, absolutely none at all. Uh, oh, yes. So oh, you think you've made things difficult for me, do you? <laughs> yes, well, to be frank, you have. I shall have to pick with incredible skill. And, uh... uh there you are, I have, a double six. Stop. <laughs> Why? Look at madame. Uh, well, uh, oh, uh, she's uh, moving her fingers. Uh, she wants something. What? Uh, she wants to play dominoes. No, that's not it. What, what, what was she trying to tell us? She's trying to write something. Give her a pencil. Uh, she wouldn't be able to hold it. Let, let, let her trace what she wants to write. We'll read it. She's saying, I'm very clever to have picked a double six. Don't play the fool. I'm not. Let, let, let her say what she wants to. Go on, dear madame. T. A. E. Oh, no, the. Be, be quiet, Grieve. Eh? There. There what? I've got it. Therese. She's written your name, oh, Therese. Why? Why on earth should she write Therese? Therese. And. And what? Go on, dear madame. Please go, go on. Let's, let's have the rest of it. Therese and Laurent. Yes, that's quite clear. She's written your two names. What's next? Therese and Laurent what? K. K what? What does K stand for? K. Th then an I, perhaps? K. K, I, Kai, Ki. Have you any idea what it could mean? No, none. Oh, it's quite clear to me. Well, kind? Kindness? Kiss? No, 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 no. no. I, I, I don't need letters on the table. I can read the whole phrase in the eyes of Madame. She wants to say, uh, Therese and Laurent, kindest of children. Well, she wanted to pay a tribute to them. That much is quite yes. certain. <laughs> we understood it, dear Madame. Mm. Uh, and we share your regard and affection for Therese and Laurent. Really, we do. Rest assured of that. Uh, uh, shall, shall we get on with the game, then? Yes, where were we? Oh, you, uh, you were just going to play the double six. Yeah, that's right. And I now play it. There. <laughs> and this time, I can follow. Thank heavens. There won't be a moment. Would you like to bring her in? Good news. You may as well all hear it at the same time.
Madame Racquin, I've been your doctor for some years now. I know you for a sensible woman. You wouldn't want me to keep anything a secret from you. Well, I've been told what you did yesterday, writing on the table, moving your fingers. I was astounded. Fortunately, it was your daughter who told me, or I would not have believed it. I can only think you made a really tremendous effort of will to do this, to express your recognition and gratitude for the loving care that Therese and Laurent have shown you. I think you've shown enormous courage. But I must tell you that however great your courage, the paralysis has taken hold and you'll never be able to do anything like that again. That is the bad news I have to tell you. down on the floor like that begging forgiveness yes. or what well get up from there you're getting the dress dirty not until she forgives me oh what the hell does it matter whether she does or not it won't bring camille back to life will it it won't undo the past there's the man who did it mother he killed camille i saw him stop that do you hear me he threw him in the river Did you tell her how you begged me to kill him? No. When Camille was alive. And you came to my room to stretch yourself out of my bed, eh? And you said you wanted me to be happy, and you said I would be happy if only Camille were dead. That's not true. No, don't! What's not true? Mm. Well, you came to my bed, as I came to yours, in there, dozens of times. Mm. And we used to make love while you were downstairs minding the shop. Even when you came into the room once, I was hiding under a pile of clothes. And as soon as you'd gone, we committed adultery again. Did you tell her that? No. I don't know why you left out the best part of the story. You were extraordinary in bed. 
You drove me wild with your lovemaking, and you persuaded me to kill Camille. No, that's not true. Do you remember the river? When Camille got into the boat, and I whispered to you, I'm going to drown him, just do what I say. And you could have stopped the whole thing, you could have screamed, you could have told Camille, but you didn't. You just stood there, you just got into the boat. It's true that I got in. But I didn't really hear what he said. I didn't know he was going to kill Camille until he did it. That's what I asked you to forgive me for, for not helping him then. Oh, go on. Hit me. Kill me like you killed Camille. What's the good of telling you all this? It's pointless, isn't it? You can't do anything about it. I know it can only distress you hearing it, and you're, you're distressed enough already, God knows. But since you've heard most of it, you better have the rest so as you don't get distressed for the wrong reasons. The first thing you've got to realize is this woman is the most lecherous, the most lustful woman on earth. Right from the first. He raped me! Oh, I never met a woman so ready to be raped. No! And if I told you the tricks you got up to in bed, a real whore's tricks. Oh. I don't know where she knew them from. She must have got them by instinct. Yes, she's a whore at heart. A natural whore. <laughs> born to suck the marrow of men's bones. If I'm a whore, what are you, a fancy man? Not any longer. <sighs> Enjoyed that, didn't you? So did I. You love me, don't you, Francois? You're the only one who does. Oh, you're a good friend to me, Francois. You are. Me. I thought I told you I don't like that cat in here at night. Throw him out. And it's too hot in here. This place is like a furnace. How do you think we're ever going to sleep? Do we ever sleep? Oh, we might, if you didn't keep stoking up that fire. What do you need a fire for in this weather? I look in it. You see what? Faces. What faces? I thought I told you to get that cat out of here. I like him. Well, I don't. Francois. She stares at me like the old woman. Every witch has a cat, hasn't she? What's the word? That cat's a familiar. With the same thought in both their minds. They want to go to the police and tell them what they know. Well, that's one thing the cat won't do. What are you going to do? Ah! Scratch me, would you? I'll teach you to stare at me. You killed him! Not quite, apparently. But at least I've thrown him out of here and he won't get back in. Monster! You! Damp that fire down. Unless you want the same thing to happen to you. Good morning, Mother. How are you this morning? Don't bother to answer. We don't want to hear that, do we? In case you're wondering what that was, that was Francois. Laurent got angry with him last night, and he's thrown him out the window, and I think he's broken his back. He's taking an awfully long time to die. Well, well, what's a cat compared to a son, eh? I'll get you your coffee. How is she? Alive, just. Like Francois? Neither of them can last much longer. I'm glad to say. No. Oh, oh my. I had a wicked thought. I didn't mean it. Please forgive me. Please, I'm sorry. You're late. Is supper ready? Not yet. Then what do you mean I'm late? I come home for supper, don't I? What are you doing? Packing these things up. What for? Can't you sell them? 
I'm closing the shop. Why? Because it's too much for me as well as looking after her, and I get precious little help from you. How are we going to live? On her money? Why not? She gave it to me. 40,000 francs. More than 40? It's enough. If we're careful. You know, some of this stuff isn't bad. Too bright for you. I don't know. Well, I'm off. You can bring the old woman in first. Bring her in yourself. If you do nothing all day long, you said so yourself, you can do that. You're off to your studio. Yes. Oh, I want some money. How much? A thousand francs. What? For lunches and so on. A thousand francs? You know she meant that money for both of us. She never said that, and she can't say it now. Look, I've got a right... A right? You've got a right? You haven't got a right to be alive. What do you mean by that? I mean the old woman can't talk, but I can. I can go straight down those stairs to the police station and tell them how you murdered Camille. All right, go to the police. I'll come with you. All right, then go on. You tell your story, I'll tell mine. You wouldn't. Oh, wouldn't I? you'll enjoy it. I came home to get some money from you. Still want that thousand francs? No. Nope. Five thousand. What? You've left your job. We've closed the shop. We're living on capital and you want five thousand of it? Yes. What would you do with it? Drink it? Drink it? And have women? What makes you think you can? I followed you today because I thought you might be going to the police. 
But you've got another way of passing your time. But for me, I've had enough. I'm at the end of my tether. If you don't want to give me money to get blind drunk, then I'll go to the police myself and they can send us both to the scaffold. I think you can frighten me with that. I'm as tired of life as you are. I am sick of it. And I can't find any way to make it bearable. If you don't go to the police, I will. I'll go now. Come on. Come on, are you coming? Anyway, we can't go to the police station today. Oh? Why? It's Thursday. Michaud and Grieve are coming. It's always. Everything. As always. What I always say is this is a happy home. Good people live here. That's why one feels so much at ease here. Yes, this is the temple of peace. Now, usually I get to bed at nine o'clock. Here it's half past eleven and I'm not sleepy. Because good people live here. Decent people. <laughs> good night, dear madame. Good night, Therese. Good night. And thank you. Good night, dear madame. Good night, Therese. Good night, monsieur. I'll see you down. Thank you. Good night, madame. Good night, Therese. Good night, Suzanne. I'll be round in the morning at nine. No, no, don't. Don't come until the afternoon. I may go out in the morning. Good, good night. Good night, madame. Good night, Therese. Good Till night. next week, I hope. Good night. Are we going to bed, then? Yes, of course. It's very late. I'll just get my water. Oh, no. I'll get it for you. Oh, God!
kill you with. Prasagati. I spend some of your money. 